This is a Momentum Media production. Property Finance Uncut, the must listen podcast for anyone with a mortgage. Find out the truth about what Australia's lenders are up to and how to make sure you're in the best possible position when it comes to your property finance. Hi okay, everyone, how are you going? It's Phil Tarrant here, host of Property Finance Uncut, October 2022. We get together at the start of every month once the RBA hands down its interest rate decision and we've seen today, again, another hike to the cash rate by 25 basis points and we're firmly in this rising rate environment. Joining me in the studio, Paul Glossop, CEO of Finney Mortgages, gives some sense of what's happening. Paul, what do we know? Well, mate, we know we're um, probably getting closer now to the top of this interest rate cycle. I think that's something that's starting to become a little bit more obvious as far as where we were probably the best part of four, five, six months ago and where we're going to be over the next few years. And um, if anyone jumps on to, to Google and, and essentially has a look at what two or three-year fixed rate mortgages are offering now, you start to see that they're probably pretty close to where the current variable rate mortgages are. And that's starting to give us a bit more confidence that we're probably not going to see in the same heady heights of one, two, three percent increases over the previous six months that we will in the next six months, 12 months or 18 months. So why are rates continuing to go upwards? Well, I think at this stage, why they did go up, um, probably not necessarily the same reason why they uh, are probably going to neutralise over the coming months is the fact that we are still in a really low unemployment rate or market environment. So we're still seeing point or 3.5% unemployment rates. We're seeing that that's now hitting that that floor. It's probably a touch up from where it was the previous month in, in August. But we're also now starting to see that uh, things like rents, rents is probably one of the big things which I think the RBA is going to tussle with. The fact of the matter is, is we've got the lowest uh, vacancy rates that we've basically uh, recorded in any of our major as well as regional markets. And the challenge is, is that because that typically is going to be a direct reflection of where supply and new supplies come into the market, the RBA, unfortunately, is not going to be able to really assist too much with rents increasing. And I think that's something that renters as well as investors are going to probably tussle with over the next few years. But if you look at the other things which are, have impacted rates going up over the past 6, 12 months over that inflation period is the fact that the, the raw material sector is still going really well. Um, we're still seeing the fact of the matter is, is that a I guess a cost of, of a basket of groceries is now starting to neutralise where we saw some really, I guess, crazy inflation numbers for the, uh, the classic head of broccoli or a, an iceberg lettuce and all those headlines that we're seeing sort of towards the first and second quarter this year. That's now starting to become a lot more normal. But I guess the overall position is that we've gone through this position of two, two and a half, three percent of an increase in interest rates. We expect that we're probably going to be hovering around this number now, possibly one, maybe two more increases before we find this more neutral territory again. So rates started going upwards. Um, the cycle began just as we enter the federal election. Now we've had a number of consecutive ones in a row. Paul, what's the impact on on repayments for the average Australian? Yeah, that's that's a really interesting one, Phil. And I think this is where it's now starting to hit home for a lot of people who are particularly people who have been on variable rates this entire period of, of interest rate increases. Um, the reality is, is that for, a, let's say, an average five six $600,000 mortgage that's been on a variable rate only six, seven, eight months ago, they're probably enjoying a rate of around somewhere in the 2%. Now, it might be at the higher or lower end. The reality of that same mortgage right now with these last six increases the fact of the matter is, is that that's probably around about $1,000 a month more for that exact same mortgage on a variable rate position. So you're talking $10,000, $13,000 net per annum that an average mortgage holder should be having to factor in to actually just make the same numbers meet those same ends as they were at the start of this year. And working with your clients at uh, Finney Mortgages, what are the, the smart operators doing right now? What are you seeing uh, actions, responses to these rising rate environments? It's an interesting one, Phil, because I think that's what we measure a lot at Finney Mortgages is, is that we try to figure out what is the appetite and what is the main desire from our clients. And that ranges from owner-occupiers who essentially have one home and a mortgage against their home right through to investors who might have a number of different assets and even self-managed super fund investors as well. And that ranges between residential and commercial. But I guess what I'm seeing and what we're seeing for the most part and what our, our brokerage team are seeing for the vast majority of the inquiry from existing as well as our new clients is that although we're seeing this interest rate environment start to see the price of money increase, one big thing that hasn't changed is that if you have held a property for more than 12 months in basically any major market across Australia, and let's say you've had it for two, three, four years, 
the reality is you've still probably got somewhere between anywhere between 15, 20, 25 percent minimum increase in the price of that asset. So what we're actually now seeing is a lot of smart, not only owner occupiers, but investors is they're getting quite pragmatic to say, well, this is the best chance I've probably got to extract equity from that property, whether I'm looking to put that equity to purpose, but also to that point we just spoke about a second ago was the fact that we're seeing interest rates go from where they were to where they are. The difference for the most part of most investors is that there's a lot of lazy money sitting there. So refinancing, not only extracting equity, but refinancing to even shave 0.5% 0.5% off that average five six hundred thousand dollar mortgage is somewhere in the tune of about three to four thousand dollars net per year every year, and that's what we're seeing. About 60 70 percent of our clients are inquiring about is getting equity out, but also trying to sharpen that pencil because one thing that is for sure is that the banks are getting very aggressive on their competition, and there is very good pricing for new customers versus existing customers. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the advertising coming in. What's the inside mail? Any good? Um indication on on products available right now, whether SMSF, owner, occupier, or, or property investors, no doubt there's difference there, but any guidance for our listeners? Yeah, for sure, mate. Well, the, the reality is if I work off an 80% loan to value ratio or better for the vast majority, if I start with owner occupiers, the reality is, is that you're still able to attract rates for owner occupiers with an 80% OVR or better that's got a three in front of it in some cases. So you're talking high three to early 4% for an owner occupier, 80% or better LVR. And as I was saying earlier, majority of variable rates in those same those same loans are probably tracking around that 4.3, 4.4, 4.5, even more percent. And you're talking a big, big difference if you're sharpening the pencil to even that 0.5%. And a lot of the time, they're, they're, they can be interest only if that is the structure that you're wanting as well. For investments, uh, investment loans, again, that same 80% LVR or better, um, you're talking around that 4.05 to 4.1%, and that's for fixed and or variable with all those facilities that a lot of investors are after. So you're talking full offsets, you're talking the ability to have the redraw account attached to that and multiple offsets if you're a multiple property investor as well. And the last one, I guess you touched on that is SMSF investors who might have a property that's sat in an SMSF, whether they've bought it recently or have had it for a long time. That's probably one of those channels which I'm seeing a lot of lazy money sitting around. So we're getting inquiry from about 20% of those those new clients that we have who have SMSF property, which they just simply haven't looked at their rates because of the nature of SMSF. You typically park it and forget about it. We're talking some people are in the vicinity of one, one and a half percent. I've seen SMSF uh, residential mortgage holders have in in a lot of cases we're seeing a six in front of their their interest rate, which it should be in that four to early five percent. So you're talking potentially five, six, seven thousand dollars a year for a half a million dollar loan that essentially is not going to that actual investor's retirement fund. So there's a lot of work that can be done there and should be done there by anyone who's holding an SMSF asset right now. So what I'm hearing then, Paul, is uh, the best operators right now are those taking action and, and looking at their their mortgage debt. How can people get in touch with you if they want to sort of break it down and see how they can be better off? Yeah, pretty simply, mate. Look, we like to go through those channels like we just talked about there and go through warts and all and figure out, are you on the best rate? Is there better opportunities, even if it's sticking with the same lender? So going down the pathway of getting in touch with us simply at um, finney.com.au or alternatively, they can give us a, a buzz on our one three hundred number. It's one three hundred zero zero two. 023. Those two channels, we've always got someone manning the phones or manning our inquiry because um, the best thing that someone can do is essentially go through, break down what they currently got, figure out what's available and what's on offer and try to figure out the difference of those numbers. Because as I said earlier, mate, there's some very, very stark differences out there. And if anything, I think everyone needs to look under the hood of their loans right now because it is probably the most important time in the last five years for, for people to really dial into what their ingoings and outgoings are. Paul Gloss, CEO of City Mortgage, thanks for your time. Thanks, mate.